are very, very frightened at the moment because the change to only a few people knowing, sorry, from only a few people knowing to millions of people knowing what's going on could happen in, could happen overnight. It could certainly happen in the space of a few days. And once that message has gone worldwide, these people are finished because ordinary people just say no. And it, 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 doesn't, to, matter, you see, it doesn't matter which, which area you look into, if you go into the military or the police that you're talking about, inside the police force, they are not, even though we might not be too impressed by the British police at the moment, but it's totally wrong to say that the other side are in the majority, they're in the minority. So if you look for a solution inside the police or inside the military or inside um, politics or inside your local authority, all it takes is for the majority of good people to understand what's, been, what's, what's actually being done to them. And then, then the whole thing is destabilized. It, it can't work. I, 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 I know it's a massive battle going on, but I think the key point about UK is the seat of the power is in this country. Well, that's what I believe. I don't know whether you'd agree with that. And therefore, if that is true, if we do the right things in Britain, the rest of it is going to unfold across the world. And I think that started to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the thing, too. Remember, they will still uh, try and distract whatever you do. Uh, quickly, too, by giving you another bank crash or something like that, or food rationing, that will come if they get their way. But God, is stop it all before it happens. That's, this is the key. Uh, we can't get to the stage where banks are against a wall and these, these big corporations, these big agri farm businesses have the, the world's food supply. I mean, they own most of it already, and they can ransom us at any time. Blackmail is a great thing for them when you're on your knees. Uh, they can't go off in riots either. Um, because uh, because you're, there's, not, again, no coordination to it. There's no purpose to it, and it's easily vanquished. But well, exposure is one thing, but it's getting harder in some countries to expose them, actually, by laws. <laughs> yeah. That's that's true. So I, I've just come back to the business that if if we are um, if we're in the business of fighting these people, um, well, you, you're the other side of the water. But but for us for us here. It seems the UK is the place the battle is going to happen because this is actually the seat of the power. Yeah, and you're, you're further ahead with all the experimentation on society that have done. Then, then we all copy what Britain does afterwards. Uh, yeah, I think that's true. I think that's true. But the other bit that I'm going to say I think um, has been a major brick out of the wall it's going to cause a real problem for these people, is to do with the behavioural control. I, I'm absolutely sure that at this stage, they thought they would be doing all of the meat of the plans you've talked about there with the food and the banking and riots and everything else. And while all that was going on, people would be totally, people would be totally unaware um, that actually they were acting out of character, that their behaviour had been changed. And this was, again, a key part of a covert plan, that people would have their behaviour interfered with and modified. Um, they wouldn't know it. And that is that is exactly what the government has been saying in its behavioural change documentation, that either people would realise they'd been changed but didn't know how it had happened, or they wouldn't even realise their behaviour had been changed. Yeah. Now, I, I think this was a significant part of the package, and it's been upset because not only are people realising exactly how their behaviour has been changed and how it's being done, that this, this knowledge, the wakening up of this on this, is, is spreading very quickly. Well, but we've got to... Um but we've got to, as I say, push. It's a matter of constant attack. Uh, and, you, and again, not being distracted as they give you something to be... Because, they're, again, they're masters at distracting us. Again, with very real things. They, they, the economy, um, the, the inflation. They can, they can whack us with so many things at one time to throw us off when, when, when we're, we're pushing hard. 
but you've got to stay stay on the track uh, and keep pushing and and keep exposing all through that hard period. You know. Hello. Hi. Uh, sorry, my mic was off there. Um, I was going to say when, um, when Brian was talking about the exposure, um, I think in terms of the likes of Cameron, Clegg, or Ender, Kenny, and Allen, I think I think we're only you know, scratching the surface of, of exposing these people, and uh, they'll, they'll obviously be just sacrificed, and uh, they'll bring somebody else in who's who's looking squeaky clean again to to give people some kind of semblance of. Uh, Normality again, but um, I, I kind of agree with Brian. I think uh, people are starting to see through that as well. Each each change of leader just brings more of the same. And I think I think that that exposure of, of people so quickly in their, their term of office, if you will, uh, it, it, it's starting to happen more rapidly uh, from the public point of view. And uh, you know, the longer that continues, because uh, the longer the, the quicker people realise that the whole point the system it doesn't matter who gets in, uh, they're all you know, following the same the same agenda, and it's it's becoming more and more obvious as as they they show themselves to be following the same agenda far quicker than you would normally have seen maybe 20 years ago with the kind of but it's slowly, but now now they're actually coming in and it, it's rapid, it's you know and it's uh, it's continuing. There's no, there's no let up in it. So, so people are kind of taking the punches one after the other and uh, realizing there's something far wrong. You know? Hi. Yeah, that, that was awful muffled my end. I don't know if uh, Brian got it. Or... Yeah, yeah. yeah, you were loud, loud and clear to me. I, I'm still having a, a job with Alan, though. He's, he's very quiet. I'm still quiet, eh? Yeah. Did, did you hear what I was saying? Anyway. Maybe we'll go to a music break and uh, try and get the connection back in. What I can do, I can try. I can try a different phone here and see if it helps. Eh? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll go to a piece of music and then we'll come back and try that. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thanks. This is Sovereign Independent Radio on UWS Community Radio and the International Community Radio Network, breaking the truth. Uh, welcome back to Southern Independent Radio. Um, we're talking to Alan Watts of CuttingThroughTheMatrix.com and I would encourage all listeners to go there uh, and listen to Alan's broadcast. He does five days a week. Um, for listeners in the UK, you can you can download it uh, the morning after and uh, he puts all the links up there for his his information to to you know prove the facts he's talking about and backs it up with uh, references to numerous uh, books, old, new, uh, historical, all the rest of it, and um, I think you'll find it very informative uh, and at times quite frightening, I think uh, Alan will agree. Um, we were talking during the break there about the the control of the food supply and the fact that, uh, well Alan mentioned before, the United Nations have, have decided that they're uh, going to be the, the masters of starvation, if you like, and um, basically ration out food based on population and uh, the governments will just have to cut the populations by any means uh, which happen to be at their disposal at the time. Um, so we were talking during the break about the, the farmers and the, the fact that uh, the, particularly recently in Australia the carbon tax has basically wiped out um, many farmers who basically aren't allowed to farm their own land anymore and for numerous reasons uh, some of it has been due to areas of special scientific interest or conservation or any other dubious scheme or, or, or plan or diktat that comes out of the United Nations. And um, it's, it should be obvious to anybody, especially those in the farming community, when, when they start hearing about coming food shortages, they should, they should start looking at themselves because they've been bribed for well over 40 years now by the, the European Union. Uh, not to grow any food. Um, when I was when I was staying in Ireland, I was surrounded by farmers, and I was the only one growing anything. Uh, all the fields around me were empty. There was maybe a few sheep, a few cattle, but uh, nobody was growing any crops whatsoever. And uh, I've moved down to England now. There's a, there's more of it being grown down here, uh, particularly wheat and uh, potatoes and things like that, the kind of staple foods. But um, in Scotland, there's, there's virtually nothing being grown. Uh, 
in, in vast areas of the countries. And uh, I was at uh, I was actually at a meeting uh, which was supposedly to to try and uh, bring about some kind of political change when I was living in Ireland. And many of the people there were farmers. And I, I asked a simple question. I, I said, "What what are you guys going to do to to um, what are you prepared to sacrifice to to get things going and to start you know growing food again and all the rest of it?" And they basically turned around and said, "Oh, we well, can't afford it." So. I basically walked out at that stage because there wasn't any point talking to them because they weren't prepared to give up their EU bribe. Um, is it the same thing going on in Canada, Alan? Are they being paid not to grow food there? Um, they, they have, yeah. They have uh, uh, for many years, in fact, too. Um, the government, the government, see, the government uh, uses wars to change everything. Again, Quigley talked about that. He said that the, one of the main side effects, and actually one of the main effects which they want uh, in, from war, major wars, is that it changes the cultures of both sides because government steps in and nationalizes so much. They get, they get into everything. And they get into farming since World War II, uh, in Britain especially, and they never let go with all of the different ministries and inspections and all the rest of it. But yeah, they started giving farmers the little bait. It's like just like the, the, the credit cards from the, the banks. They call them uh, uh, the bait, you know, the mouse baits. And uh, or, and uh, same with farmers. Uh, we, we can help you out with your taxes. You'll pay less tax if you do this. Once you start letting them dictate to you, then they come along and say, we'd rather not you not grow so much stuff this year because it's going to be an abundance in corn or wheat or whatever. And uh, now that we're, we're putting all our food together in the EU, uh, it's going to make it too cheap. And, uh, and the big companies will, will, won't profit so much. And that's why you had all the butter mountains and so on. They were dumping food in the, in, in the, the, the channel uh, and so on to keep the prices up. So uh, basically government is completely in bed. And this is what we've got to understand. Government is not your government. It hasn't been your whole life long. The government you have are, are really the men that, uh, especially the Royal Institute of International Affairs, these are the men they, they put in. And Quig Quigley said the same thing. There hasn't been a prime minister or a president uh, uh, elected by the people, actually elected by the people, uh, who serves the people since the late 1800s. And it's, it doesn't matter about the rest of them. They're allowed to vie for power amongst themselves that the minor ones are coming up. But uh, the guys on top are always members of the same organization. And now we have the EU uh, with, it, with its European Council on Foreign Relations, and George Soros is at the top of that. Now, Soros pretends he's out to help the world, like they all do. I, whenever they say this, I, I, you know, I tell people to run in the opposite directions. But um, Soros, um, again, was involved in, in the wars in Europe and, and Kosovo and Yugoslavia. He was involved with Madeleine Albright and the guys from the World Bank and the IMF that already had it planned which uh, companies they were, they were going to steal from, from that country uh, for the, and, and have it under their own corporations. They're all involved in this together. And so every side that seems to be out there opposing each other in the high levels is not. They're all working on the same agenda. And, and the rest of it is just to confuse us, basically. So food is a weapon. Never, never, never forget that food is a weapon. Anything which is a weapon is weaponized. Your, your food also is weaponized. And that was the whole thing to do with giving you um, the, the Monsanto seed uh, and the Rothschilds group as well. They've got their own version as well. There's a whole bunch of them out there. Um, that You have to go back every year to, to the master, basically. You're back in serfdom to the master for the seeds. And uh, rather than just collect your own seed, they've weaponized the food. They've poisoned the food. And I really mean that, literally. They have poisoned the food. The guys from Monsanto were, are a big part of the military-industrial complex. They were involved not just in Agent Orange, but in many other forms of killing whole populations. And when I see scientists coming together to improve your potato, I get a bit nervous. The same scientists. And uh, now they dose it with their own pesticides that gets into be cell in the plants. Uh, you're eating that stuff. And, uh, and you wonder why the cancer rate is, is, is going sky high. This is all predicted by them before they started. They knew what they were going to do. So you've got to get back to natural farming if you can. But that means that the farmer's got to have the right to tear up every, uh, every demand made by government that's been put upon them. 
so he can start being a farmer on his own land and growing what he wants once again and doing it the way he wants once again. But once they take the, the bait from government, oh, we'll help you, we'll give you tax relief or we'll give you little grants.